Hello YouTube, this is Insane Monster, and we are here doing What If Luffy Merged with Incursio. Now then, uh, before anything else, I'd like to say Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you guys are having a good holiday. If you're not in the U.S. and celebrate Thanksgiving, then it's just another day where you get a couple of What Ifs pre-recorded and scheduled and all that. So, but... Either way, hope you hope you'll enjoy. And before the what if starts, hit it. Okay, so, when we last left off, Luffy had his head stuck in the bird's mouth and was being carried away by it. As Zoro paddled very hard to try to chase him down in order to catch up with his new idiot captain. As for Nami, who basically stole a buggy... A pirate boat and sailed away with it. Doro still bumped into the buggy pirate crew members, forcing them to row the boat. And Nami ends up stealing a map from Buggy's crew. Where we see Buggy being the bird that Luffy's head is stuck inside of. And decides to just, you know what, I'm going to blow that up. As Luffy falls to the ground, he gets back up, finding himself in between Nami and the buggy pirate. As Nami states that Luffy is her boss in front of the buggy pirates, then asks him to deal with them, running off. Luffy honestly takes care of them pretty quickly. As Nami shows up, seeing the, the aftermath, and asks to talk to him. They have a similar conversation as in canon. As Nami tells Luffy what she thinks about pirates, and Luffy just not being phased as he eats the, ha the food in the random house that they basically broke and entered so yeah as Nami tells Luffy she has a plan tying Luffy up and Luffy just going along with it and being led to Buggy as she states that this is her boss and she tricked him to get him there to give the buggy so that she can join his crew. Buggy puts Luffy in the cage and starts a party to celebrate Nami joining his crew. As Zoro shows up, just seeing this town completely empty. Luffy uses his claws and scales to cut through the rope in order to free himself from the bindings and stretch out to grab some meat that munch on. As Buggy uses the buggy ball to have some fun, Luffy is pissed at this for destroying parts of the village. As Buggy looks over, yelling, How the hell did you get out of those ropes? And where'd you get and who gave you that meat? as he is getting pretty annoyed by this, and decides to use the buggy ball on Luffy, ordering Nami to light the fuse. Hesitates, obviously. The same happens in canon, where a buggy pirate crew member lights it instead as Nami whacks him in the head with her bow staff, but the wick for the cannon is still lit and she grips onto it, extinguishing the flame. 
obviously causing some burn marks on the palm of her hand. As Buggy is upset, Zoro ends up coming there and picking the fight with Buggy. With Zoro stating, oh, come on. Can you really not get out of that? Luffy just smirks and laughs a little bit, stating, I can. I was just kind of waiting to see how it played out. As he grips the bars and basically bends them open. So just walk out. But Buggy thinking, the hell? As Zoro fights Buggy and... Unlike in canon, Luffy has a free is free here and has some pretty good natural instincts after being merged with Incursio, realizing what's about to happen instinctively when Buggy uses his severed hand to attack Zoro. Luffy quickly grabs his hand and squeezes it, almost breaking it. As Buggy Gets his hand free from Luffy, bringing it back, explaining that he's a chop chop man, that swords aren't going to do jack against him. And Luffy tells them that they should probably get out of here. Zoro puts away his swords, thinking, yeah, if my swords aren't going to do jack to this guy, probably best. As they go, Luffy grips the firing end of the cannon and flips it to face Buggy and his crew. As Zoro tells Nami to light it, which he does, blasting Buggy and his crew. He does use his crewmates to shield him, though, in order to protect himself as they get out of there, thinking about what to do next. Nami's... Angry, obviously. She had to give the map back for one, and had to, and now she's stuck with two pirates, having to work with them to get out of this mess. With Luffy stating it could be worse, with Nami stating how can it be worse, with Joro chiming in stating you could still be with the buggy pirates. I mean, the both of us could have just left you there. With Nami sighing, thinking, these two are crazy. As we then see the mayor, who explains the situation. This does piss off Luffy, obviously. And as Zoro didn't get stabbed here, he doesn't go take a nap in the building. So... Uh, the Beast Tamer and his oddly white lion go after the Straw Hats. As the lion sees the uh, Luffy, Zoro, and Nami, the Beast Tamer acts, tells uh, Renji to attack them. As it does go at them, Luffy instinctively, uh, well, more or less reflexes on instinct to grab uh, Renji's paw and toss him. Which just shocks Nami for how freaking strong this guy is, as well as the mayor. As the lion does get to where, uh, it is thrown in front of the pet food shop, and Susu is just barking like crazy at the lion, which the lion just swipes at him, knocking him away. And when the lion goes to try to hurt the dog, Luffy bends his arms, grabbing the lion using a gum gum hammer, slamming him, Renji, into the ground. As the Beast Tamer is freaked by this, Luffy is pissed and goes for a gum gum dragon pistol, forming scales on his fist, 
to punch him a bit hard, a good bit harder than in cannon, knocking him out. So Frenji is able to move and grabs the beast tamer, his beast tamer to bolt out of there. They check on little Susu. He's okay, just some scrapes and bruises. And he still does bite Luffy, but Luffy is okay with it. He's gotten somewhat used to, well, he evolved to get somewhat of a resistance to claw and bite marks after all that time, hunting down very, very cart large and carnivorous animals with his brothers. So, yeah. He doesn't really mind and pets Susu. Causing Susu to not know what to do and just releases him. And takes a nap on the porch. As the mare is pissed now and runs off the go deal with Buggy and his crew. With Zoro stating he's gonna get himself killed. And Nami yelling out, the hell is with you? Pointing at Luffy, asking what he is. Luffy grabs his corner of his mouth and stretches it out, telling her he's a rubber man. He ate the gum gum devil fruit. Which, Nami is still confused, remarking about his eyes and those scales. Luffy states that, I'm not really sure what to tell you. I've had these things ever since I could remember, though, though I didn't always have both of my eyes like this. His eyes are the same as the actual draconic beast that Incursio was made from. Red with a cross pupil in it. As they decide to go follow the old man so that he doesn't get himself killed, Nami was thinking, thinking about the pattern in his eyes looked very familiar for some reason, as well as those white scales, but couldn't quite pin it down. Thinking that she might have seen something like that in an old illustration, an old book, but she couldn't remember what. As they got there, the mayor, start, he is already picking a fight with Buggy, yelling at him and all that, as Luffy knocks him out and yells at Buggy, calling him Big Nose. Which, obviously, like in canon, gets the response with the Buggy Ball pointed at them. So, Luffy inflates again and bounces it right back at Buggy with Gum Gum Balloon, which he's just smirking at. As he sees that Buggy's still okay, as well as his first mate. The Beast Tamer finally woke up after being returned to the hideout and yells at his uh, boss about Luffy having rubber double fruit powers and some weird scale ability. With Buggy looking back, being pissed. The first mate, the weird guy on the unicycle, still fights Zoro, but Zoro is able to handle him better now, now that he doesn't have a previous stab wound in him. So that goes pretty well. As for Buggy and Luffy, their fight goes pretty well. Luffy covers his hands and forearms and scales, using them to defend against the blades pretty easily. As Buggy is getting pissed, he ends up cutting Luffy's hat, which really pisses off Luffy, also revealing his horns that Nami thought were actually a part of his hat, not a part of his skull. Though, she finally clicked. 
she remembered where she's seen the images of that symbol that's uh, basically Luffy's eyes as well as those scales and those horns as well. An old book that explains the legends stories about the uh, aerial arms and that there was a sword made from some kind of evolving dragon that evolved to be able to survive in any condition. Thinking that no way I I didn't I wasn't sure the things in that book were real, but Percio as he's thinking that she might have hit the jackpot if she can find out where he's hiding that sword in although really confused considering Luffy's wearing a vest, shorts, and sandals. That's it. As Luffy is pissed, yelling that to give his hat back, and that's something that Shanks gave him. As Buggy is disgusted and steps on Luffy's hat, which surprises Nami that Luffy would treasure something like a straw hat so much. As Buggy then explains how and why he hates Shanks. So, yeah. And Nami slips away to go steal Buggy's treasure at this point, wondering what she would do if she had, if she, well, you know, can get her hands on Incursio. If she had that, she could probably make an insane amount of profit. As he does get his buggy's treasure, and the fight goes a lot more south for Buggy. He's bleeding from his mouth and nose, and has a good bit of bruises, needing to use his chop chop separate little trick to make it harder for Luffy to get him. Though so his anger shifted right really quickly when he saw Nami running away with his treasure, chasing after her, calling her a thief. As Luffy, like in canon, is pretty much just destroying Buggy's feet, pinching them, smashing them, like his toes against the hard cement, which I would imagine is a hundred times worse than stubbing your toe. So, ah, God, that, that, that would hurt. Ugh, it's just cringe thinking about it. But, yeah, Buggy is smacked with the treasure bag that rips, filling all the gold and such. As he combines his parts again, yelling at them that he's going to finish this, but unfortunately for him, Nami tied up most of his body parts and now he's just feet, hands, and a head. Giving Luffy a perfect shot as a gum gum dragon bazooka. Sending Buggy flying. Team Rocket style. The Buggy Pirates bailing now that their captain's gone. Nami... Uh, ties up the bags, giving Luffy one, telling him to carry it as they leave. Getting some, well, some very negative attention from the villagers, whose town got pretty trashed by Buggy and his Buggy Balls, and full-on blitzing out of there when Luffy states that they're pirates. Being chased down, Susu still stops them from chasing Luffy, Nami, and Zoro, who are trying to leave, as thanks for saving him, and the mayor wakes up, chasing after them to thank them in person. Luffy does still leave the treasure bag he's carrying, so that they can uh, rebuild their town. 
from all the damage. Yelling at them from the sea, thanking them. As Nami tries to drown Luffy. But Luffy isn't really panicking that much. Lifting his head above water, asking what she's doing. This confuses her a lot. Considering Devil Fruit users are supposed to get pretty weak when coming in contact with the sea. Or at least would panic if someone was trying to shove, their, shove them into the ocean. So she asks the obvious question that's been on her mind. Why? Where's Incursio? Luffy doesn't know what she's talking about. As he tries to think. Explain what Incursio and Imperial arms are. Remarking that his eyes have the similar uh, markings that Incursio does. As well as those white scales and such. Explaining that Incursio is a sword that transforms into a pure white suit of armor. Well, not pure, but you know. Luffy scratches his head, not knowing what she means. As he just sighs, thinking that Asked, thinking about what questions should he ask to make it more clear. Asking, where's the sword? Luffy states he doesn't have a sword. That's Zoro's thing. With her thinking, wait. That thing. Said that it was created from a dragon that could evolve in order to survive in any environment. Could someone have merged the sword with his body before he could remember? She thought about this, but kept it to herself just in case, thinking that it would make sense. If it became part of him, then perhaps if he evolved to a point to where ocean water wouldn't cause it to become weak, like it would for any devil fruit user explaining why he was calm while she was attemptedly trying to shove him into the ocean besides remarking that ah, well whatever and just leaves it at that thinking that luffy must someone must have hurt, put it into his body or something not knowing what it could be, but assuming that if the beast that was used to make it would evolve to survive in any condition, then would it survive even after being turned into a weapon? She kept this to herself, not knowing whether or not she could really trust these guys, or if she stood, you know, tell them anything. She just leaves it at that as they go off sailing. Now then, this is where we'll be ending this part of the What If. I do hope you enjoyed and such. In the next part, we will be at the point where they go to Usopp's Island. Now, I hope you do did enjoy this. And please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also remember to hit that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new vid. Also, make sure that the bell is set to all so that you are properly notified. So, with all that taken care of, I do hope you enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and see you later.